Oh, okay. Well, then, Dr. Buntipus. I yes. was going for, like, a superhero thing, but then, like, halfway through, I gave up. Anyway, there, there's a few here, but they're not my best nicknames. Just letting you know that now. Well, then, Bunny, it is time once again for another installment of Mandela Effect Moments in Popular Music. All right. This is a vaguely reoccurring, fairly newish segment where I use popular music to try and explain how I am obviously from another dimension somewhere else, and the proof of it is in modern American music. <laughs> Songs okay. that were popular, big hits, massive successes that everyone thinks is normal but me. <laughs> so this week... We are discussing the year known as 1984. It was a magical time, Bunny. Yes. 1984. It was so amazing that, that authors like George Orwell were writing books about it. Exactly. That's From that's the how, past. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. From the past. It, it, it was an amazing, amazing time. In the year 1984, the makers of Raiders of the Lost Ark Wanted to make a sequel. So they're like, oh, well, well, if we're, we're going to make another film with Indiana Jones, we need to think. Let's see. What made Raiders of the Lost Ark successful? What was the one thing that made Raiders of the Lost Ark a big hit? Was it the romance? No. Was it the action? No. Oh, you know what? I know. The sole reason for the first film's success. Mm -hmm. Nazis' faces melting. Yes. So they decided, what if the next Indiana Jones movie focused solely on Nazi face-melting type moments? Uh-huh. Thus, the sequel was born, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Mentally Scarring Children. <laughs> huge film, huge film, big, big hit. Yes, and one, of the, the, uh, and one of the main reasons for coming up with NC-17. Yeah. No, 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 sorry, PG-13. Yeah. Yeah. In the year 1984, against all logic, against all rational thought, sports fans somehow actually thought that the name Fuzzy Zeller was a normal name that a normal person would have. Yes, I, I do not remember a Fuzzy Zeller. Yeah. Yeah, he was a huge, huge uh, golf star. He was the white Tiger Woods. Mm -hmm. Fuzzy Zeller. Back when golf was just uh, old, fat, white guys. Yes. Yeah. Fuzzy Zeller. That was a normal name, and everyone thought, oh, that, that's a normal name that a normal person would have. Well, you, and you, you know I'm still having a hard time believing that there is another... Ty Cobb. Yeah, 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 that's weird. Yeah. That is weird. That is really weird. In the year 1984, um, Tanya Katane was still a thing. Mm hmm. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Definitely not a thing. Yeah, I, I, I stopped listening to Whitesnake when she left the band. Yeah. Yeah. In the beginning of 1984, the then fairly unknown band, Def Leppard, was struggling to hit the mainstream. So they called a band meeting and said, oh, we need to figure out what's the one thing. What's the one thing that'll make us a success? And then they figured it out. They realized what was wrong with the band. So they went to their drummer and they said, we need to have a talk drummer from Def Leppard. <laughs> um, I have a name, guys. It's Rick. Shut up, drummer from Def Leppard. Listen, drummer from Def Leppard. We figured out what's wrong with the band. And, well, we're not sure how to put this. <laughs> it's your two arms. <laughs> really need to... Really need to get that whole two arms thing and maybe just, uh, you know, have it. 
Mm-hmm. You need to have that. If you could just slice it in twain. <laughs> one, one more arm than we need for this band. And so he got his arm removed because that's how much of a professional he was. Well, did did he like just immediately go and do it? Because I'm I'm picturing a long protracted time of the other band members getting caught with butcher knives and axes yeah. and and things like that. And no, no, the guy was trying to pass it off. No, the guy was such a professional that he not only did he immediately remove one of his arms, but then he was like, "Hey, if this doesn't work, I'll remove a foot." I will uh, take an eye out. I'll lose a ball <laughs> if if it means that we are a successful band, and that's professionalism right yeah, there. Yeah, that's some serious professionalism. Impressed with his commitment to the band. In the year 1984, the band Frankie Goes to Hollywood wrote a song about gay sex, and everyone loved it. Which one was that? Relax, that don't was... do it when you want to go through it. Relax, <laughs> don't do it when you want to come. Those are the lyrics to a popular number one hit song in 1984. Now, that isn't the Mandela Effect moment. It could be, yeah. but it's not. And then everyone's walking around with shirts that say, Frankie says, relax. <laughs> it's about gay sex. Mm-hmm. And everyone was okay with that, but that's not the moment. That's not I, the moment. I, I, I never <laughs> actually I never actually knew that, but like there's only so close I want to listen to Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I got I don't know how it happened, but but I got a song from the band Aha on my phone. Yeah. Aha is the band who wrote uh the classic eighties song Take On Me. Mm-hmm. And apparently they wrote songs that weren't that. I, well, they from what songs. I've what I've heard, they are they are huge wherever it is Elfland that they come from. Well, that's not surprising because this other song of theirs that I have on my phone, holy crap, it's freaking wonderful. Yeah. It's one of the best songs. I've ever heard. It's called Summer Went On or something like that. Anyway, it's a beautiful song. Now I'm really uh, looking at all of my one-hit wonders in a different way, you yeah. know? I, I really think Take Me On was more about the video. Yeah, yeah. No, the video was amazing. Because the video was awesome for the time. Yeah. In 1984, let's talk about sports in 1984. Of course, when you think sports in 1984, there's one thing that you think of. Because in 1984, all of America's eyes were on the All-Valley Karate Championship and young upstart rookie Danny LaRusso. Yes. Who came out of nowhere to win it all with his patented crane kick. He won the tournament despite in the next to last round someone sweeped his leg. Yes. But he managed to still win it all. Everyone was blown away by Danny LaRusso. Also, in 1984, Van Halen told us to jump. Uh -huh. The sound that doves make when they cry apparently sounds an awful lot like a purple feminine man pixie who doesn't believe in blood transfusions. <laughs> and Hulk Hogan won the WWF title, which he held until he said the N-word one time and was then banished to the Forbidden Zone. Really? Then, yeah, yeah. Then, also, in 1984, a weird thing happened. The two dudes from ABBA decided to make a musical, okay? The two <laughs> dudes from ABBA, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> yes, okay, Maxwell, take a drink of the root beer. The two dudes from ABBA, they decided they wanted to write a musical, but they had never written a musical before. So they teamed up with future Circle of Life and a whole new world songwriter, Tim Rice, who is a big deal. He, he yeah. wrote, 
he he wrote most of the of Andrew Lloyd Webber's big plays with him. It was Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice, and they wrote these plays together. And then he wrote most of the golden age of Disney animated musicals. So Tim Rice teamed up with the two dudes from ABBA to write a musical uh-huh. about chess. About chess. Good lord. About the, the dangerous, high-octane world of chess. Hmm. Okay? You following me so far? Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, the concept for the musical put me to sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. They decided... Uh, the two dudes from ABBA got together with uh, the guy who wrote the music for The Lion King, and together they wrote a musical about the high-stakes world of chess. They called their thrilling new musical, get this, Chess. That was the name of the musical. Wow. It was very, 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 very loosely based on Bobby Fischer playing chess against the Russians. The musical is as heavy on Cold War paranoia as it is heavy on outdated disco music from, (laughs) I don't know, Lapland or wherever the hell they're from, ABBA's from. You know, you know, there's there's only one choice for star of that musical. Who? Leif Garrett. Oh, yeah, yeah. Leaf Garrett. That's fun. That's so weird that you mention that because I have a Leaf Garrett reference much later in the podcast. Yeah. Cool. Already written in the show. Yeah. And I was trying to think of a way. How can I make Bunny realize that I'm talking about Leaf Garrett here? And then you go ahead and mention Leaf Garrett in the beginning of the episode. That's amazing. That's magical. <laughs> That's because we are a well-oiled team. We are. We're a well-oiled podcasting machine. (laughs) So the beginning of Act 2 of this chess musical, Uh I want to reiterate the fact that there's an 80s disco chess musical out there. The beginning of Act 2 features our chess hero, As he prepares himself for a massive worldwide chess competition that is happening in Bangkok. Okay. The song that plays in the beginning of Act 2 of a disco-heavy 1980s chess (laughs) Cold War musical was a massive freaking hit all over the world. Really? Really? And is still seen as a legendary classic 80s song. Despite the fact that this song, One Night in Bangkok, has numerous chess references in the lyrics. One of the first lines of the song it literally says, The creme de la creme of the chess world and a show with everything but Yule Brenner. And this <laughs> song... From a chess musical. <laughs> it's right up there with all of the other popular 80s songs. When, when you try and describe, when you, when, you, when you turn on an 80s radio station, and I know this because we have an 80s station at work, you turn on the 80s radio station, and this is the song that plays. We listen to the 80s station a lot, and so I hear this song all the time. And, and I heard it all the time back then. Yeah, it 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 it, it and it, it blows me away that this song literally has numerous chess references in it, and yet everyone is still, oh, I love this song. You have no idea where this song is from. You have no <laughs> idea what this song is about. You have no idea that some feminine guy is saying chess things to you. <laughs> I'm not the only one who thinks this is weird. <laughs> That is that is weird. It's a popular song. I think one of the reasons why it's so popular is because the singer is like a, a, a like the greatest chess player of all time. He's a chess genius. What I'm trying to say is he's socially retarded and he probably has Asperger's. Yeah. So so he's like a paranoid dick. He's Bobby Fischer, basically. So he, while he's singing his song, and he's not really singing, he's just kind of talking. 
but he is such a self-righteous dick. The, like, there's all these, like, women and, and, and people dancing around him, and he's saying things like, um, um, I get my kicks above the waistline sunshine. <laughs> you better go back to your bars, your temples, your massage parlors. And the one line which blows me away, because, it li- it, like, literally, when this line comes up, I look around the store to see if anyone, like, it, certainly someone will be triggered by this. Okay. Certainly someone will be triggered by this line and realize, wait a second, it, it, this, is a, this popular song from the 80s is from a chess musical. So he, he says um, to the people who are dancing around him, I let you watch, I would invite you, but the queens we use would not excite you. <laughs> There's another line, too, which is equally as good. I don't see you guys raging the kind of mate I'm contemplating. He's thinking Ooh. about chess, mate. All these other people are thinking about sex. Yeah. And this song plays all the time! <laughs> and I hear it on the radio, and I hear it... it, it all over the place. And it plays at work all the time. If we listen to the 80s station, it will come on. It comes on all the time. There is a popular song that was a, like a top 10 hit that was from a 1980s Cold War chess musical written by two of the guys from ABBA. <laughs> and everyone's okay with this. <laughs> like the, the radio stations in the 80s are like, oh, hey, yeah, no, this... This Michael Jackson song is great, but you know what we need? We need more songs from chess musicals. That See, would that, be radical. That that song hit right when I was getting into like my Led Zeppelin Pink Floyd phase. Yeah. So I I, I remember having heard the song around somewhere. Yeah. But like none of None of those lyrics that you read ring a single bell. Yeah, because I don't think anyone ever pays attention to the lyrics. They just pay attention to the chorus where the girls are singing, yeah. One night in Bangkok makes the hard man humble. Yeah. And you're not paying attention to the dude who's talking, who's talking down to you during the actual verses. It, it, it's, it's amazing. I, sh- I, I, told, I was talking to Bella about this, and she couldn't believe it. So I showed her the video, and one of the first things she said is, oh, my God, the entire set of the video is a chessboard. (laughs) Yeah, and everyone was okay with this. How was everyone okay with this? This is a hit song from a freaking chess musical about how the Russians are evil and like disco music. How was everyone okay with this but me? (laughs) I, I I I I don't know, and it's it's amazing that you point that out. Yeah, that is freaky weird. Yeah, everyone is okay with this. Everyone was okay with Jay Z sampling Little Orphan Annie, mm-hmm. and everyone was okay with a popular hit song on the radio from a chess musical written by literally one half of ABBA, the <laughs> half with penises. <laughs> It upsets me when this song comes on because this song shouldn't be. This song should not exist. And I'm the only one who sees this. (laughs) It is bizarre. It's weird. I I was also thinking you you could cast Sylvester Stallone, but it would have to be full contact chess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 